Okay, uh, this is my Ford 247 disc. But uh, I thought I did a video on this a while back, but I guess I didn't. Or if I did, I never uploaded it. This is a 5610S tractor. And I got my spray tank mounted on the front there with a homemade frame. We used that for years and years. Pardon the wind. Used that for years and years and years when we were uh, spraying crops. It'd have a belly boom mounted on this bracket here. Uh, the boom went right here with a hose clamp around it like that. Stuck out to about uh, oh, about here from the tractor, this 14 foot wide boom, which would spray this outer row right in the path of the disc. Um, I just left all that on there because, well, just leave all that on there. Because I still use it with a spray gun and uh, even a rear mount boom, 8 row, 30, uh, 30 foot boom. Oh, there's a strainer. Right there, it's got valves under the tank. Uh, I'm probably see them up in there. But uh, yeah, this suction line runs back. The uh, this is where you'd hook in a PTO pump. Take this fitting out. These two screw onto your uh, roller pump, hypro roller pump. This is the suction line. This is the output line curves around up here to the valve this is uh, like a master boom shut off here but uh, and then this is where your boom would hook up your hose running back to the boom or to the back for whatever if you're uh, or using a spray gun or whatever just screws right on there with these garden hose type end couplers makes everything nice and easy now the uh, sprayer itself you can see the hose from the bottom coming in that's the from the pump uh, no I'm sorry the hose coming in to the side here is from the pump and this banjo valve is two way that away is off the spray goes through goes straight out and that's the return line to the tank for the agitator you'll notice a T here with a bypass this is your pressure regulator here is that your pressure this is your boom pressure spray that's bypassed above the pressure here going to your boom this is the boom supply hose returns through this bypass T and to the tank and then you get to the end of the field and the valve is stiff because I hadn't worked it in a year or two but anyway that would be turned on to spray so it sends spray through here to the boom bypass pressure through here back to the tank agitator get to the end of the field flip that valve down now it's off make your turn pull back in the field turn the spray back on and when you shut this off instead of it shutting off it simply diverts the full pump flow back to the tank through that return hose down there and up there by the engine under the tank to return the flow directly to the tank without uh, any pressure to keep the tank stirred up good and mixed when you're mixing a load of chemical you leave that valve like that and the spray pump keeps the spray in the tank really boiling rolling to mix in all the chemicals real good so when you flip the valve to all shut the boom off your pump pressure goes to nothing but your flow goes real high to keep it mixed when you flip it down to spray, it pressurizes the boom and then just bypasses any extra flow and pressure through the bypass to the agitator. The other thing I wanted to show is this. Um, 
These are my kiddie pool toppers. Now, what I did was that's some real light grade angle iron. Uh, it's like, it's not even eighth inch thick, I don't think. It's like one by one. It's welded together. Just a simple little thing. Uh, it does not, it's not welded or anything to the ROPS. It simply bolts to the ROPS so that uh, you're not messing up the structural integrity of the ROPS because you're not supposed to weld or drill or cut on ROPS because you can damage the tubes. And then this is just a regular little kitty swimming pool. And then this is some old plywood that I had left here because uh, at first I just had boards up here, a couple of three boards, but it would create stress points that would break the kitty pool. And the kiddie pool is basically just setting up there, but there is a couple of boards. That's what this screw is sticking through is about. Uh, there's a couple of, <coughs> oh crap, I'm stuck. Got to get moved. There's a couple of boards, just cleats, rounded ends there to kind of uh, keep the pool from blowing away. Now, when I made this thing, I designed it, and of course the tractor's sitting on an incline here, so it's hard to judge. But this is with the phone directly in front of my face. I can see out really good. See behind me, see the disc, tool, whatever I'm doing. See really good. Uh, with the loader, lean forward here, you can see whatever you're doing on the, the other tractor's got the loader, the other Ford. But basically in the field, you're only this high above the horizon. So the sun, you don't get sun in your eyes until just before sunset. About the last 30 minutes before sunset, you gotta worry about sun in your eyes. But uh, yeah, this was about maybe 30 bucks worth of steel. 30, 40 bucks worth of steel. This is some old plywood that we had in the shop, which is why it's got some paint mixing stains on it, but pff, I don't care. I'm not looking at the plywood all day. And these swimming pools were like $9 or so, or used to be at Walmart. I think they're about 15 now. But uh, yeah, as long as they're kept out of the sun, they do really well. And yeah, we did drill a couple of drain holes in the rim, or maybe this one just in the back, I don't remember. Because we got one of this on the other 5610 too. And uh, anyway, they work great. Now you can get those metal topper kits for these, which is pretty similar as far as uh, they have some type of framework. And then they have a little metal shell. The little metal shell only comes out about this far past the edge. And they don't go very far forward and they don't, they might turn down just a little bit in the front, but not a lot. Sorry for the wind. It's gonna be stormy here tonight and tomorrow. Anyway, uh, yeah, the last time I priced one of those kits that were over $950, and that's been probably 10, 12, 15 years ago. So I'm sure those things are well over a grand by now, probably $1,100, $1,200. But uh, anyway, so that's, uh, that's kind of what she looks like, you know, on the front of the tractor. And it keeps you really good because it's so much wider and has that lower lip than the, uh, than the uh, uh, topper kits or cap cap kits, I think they call them now, because there's a manufacturer that's making them now and selling them. These shade you much, much better. They, because this pool sticks out over your fender, you're even kept from getting a lot of sun on you until later in the afternoon when the sun isn't so hot and so so fierce.
so anyway that's that uh just thought if anybody was interested i'd got the idea for that i'm gonna credit them out of farm show magazine if you don't get that magazine i highly recommend it it's got a lot of great ideas for farmers to build and improve and uh make things upgrade things uh take old stuff and make it into something newer or better that does the same work as something that costs a lot of money so anyway yeah that's uh always a good thing and uh i highly recommend you check it out www.farmshow.com and uh anyway i know i've got a lot of great ideas out of there and used them so thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys on the flip side bye